In this video, we will learn the basics of motion tracking or how to 3D track your camera inside the Blender and how to add additional 3D elements in your scene to make them appear like they're belonging there. So let's do it. Let's press A to select everything, X and delete everything from the scene because we don't need that at all. And let's feature layout. Let's go to the plus VFX and motion tracking because we will track the motion of our camera. This is how the layout looks. And now we need to open our footage. By the way, you have the links down there in the description so you can download both the footage and the 3D file that I will use here for this example so you can follow along. All right, now that we covered that, you can either just directly drag and drop our footage to the scene or click open and find it. Or what I prefer, what I found that Blender works a little bit better with an image sequence. So instead of dragging your video file, which is perfectly okay, you can just render your video file as an image sequence in any of 3D, any of uh, video editing softwares like Premiere Pro, DaVinci Resolve, Final Cut, it doesn't matter. And now I will select everything here, just drag and drop it. And here we have it. First thing that you will probably notice, or maybe not, is that the footage is a little bit washed out. The colors are a little bit different. The contrast is different. And that's because the color management in Blender by default is AGX. It's not standard. So we need to change that. Go here to the render tab, go all the way down to the color management and switch from AGX to the standard. And you will see before and after. This is much better. We need the standard one. And now that we are here in render tab, switch from EV to cycles and from CPU to GPU because we will use cycles for this type of um, jobs for VFX because cycles give you a photorealistic result. You want that. All right. Now that we cover that, we need to tell the Blender how many frames we will work with. And we can just click on set scene frames and Blender will automatically set the amount of frames that we have here on uh, the footage is 200 and 39. Perfect. And you can see this uh, purple line, it's uh, jagged a little bit. So it's not completely uh, purple. And that's because we didn't load everything into the cache uh, from the footage. So let's do that. Let's prefetch it. Now everything is full and you can easily scrub back and forth without any hiccups. Perfect. Now what we need to do is to track the scene. There are two ways how you can track the scene. You can track it manually, you can track it automatically. I almost always use automatic. Uh, method, but it's important to know how to do it manually because sometimes you will be in need to manually add some trackers to the scene. So let me show you how to do it manually and then let's do it automatically. So let's zoom it right uh, to this portion of the scene. And here you have the markers. We need to add markers. Blender need at least eight markers per frame in order to be able to perform proper 3D tracking. So we can click add and just click somewhere in the scene and we are adding our marker. Marker has two segments. It has the pattern size. And in this uh, rectangle here, you can see everything that is inside it will be treated like a pattern and Blender will try to uh, match that pattern in every single frame. And if you press Alt and S, you will see the search region, the search size. And this is the size, uh, the region where Blender will try to find this pattern. So the smaller the search size is, the more precise tracking will be. And the smaller the pattern is, again, the sm more precise uh, uh, tracking will be. But you don't need to think too much about that. The default value work most of the time. Let's press Alt S again to delete it, to hide the search size. And here you can see there is a pattern size and the search size. So you can um, add another marker, you can see this is much higher the pattern size than, than this and uh, the search size also much, much bigger than this. So let's press Alt S, I will delete both of these markers. And this is how you manually add the markers. Remember, you need to have at least eight per frame in order to, for Blender to properly track it. And here you have some presets. So blurry footage will have certain uh, pattern and search size, then fast motion against certain and so on and so forth. So I will use default, which works perfectly fine for this scene. And we will use automatic method. And how to do it, just go to the first frame. Okay, right there, click detect features and Blender will automatically detect the best tracking markers that will be good for our tracking. And now we need few more things. We need to change the motion model. We have location, location, rotation, location and scale, location, rotation and scale, affine and perspective. So affine will work in most of the cases. If you're not sure what you can, you're doing, affine will cover you. But here 
if we go, we can see we have location changing. So we have motion and we have rotation. So we can go with location rotation, we can add the scale. So also it's not wrong. So let's go with this. And also, uh, we want to check normalize here in this footage, the normalize is not that important, but normalize will normalize the light uh, while tracking the intensity of the light. And uh, this will be a little bit slower, but it will be more precise. So I always like to check normalize. And one more thing, the tracking, uh, this tracking setting extra, uh, I want the correlation to set 0 0.9. And that basically means that Blender needs to be 90% sure that track is correct in order to continue tracking. And now all we need to do is to press either Control T or click on this icon that means track forward. So let's track forward. This is how it looks. Now I want also to detect features right here at the end of the footage. So detect more features. By the way, if you want to detect even more features, you can uh, open this menu right there. And for example, lower the distance a little bit, it will add more and more features and play with these threshold and margin. But for me, this is okay. So now let's track backwards. Perfect. We have more tracking markers. Now I want to go somewhere uh, in the middle somewhere here, for example, detect features, track forward and come back to the same keyframe and track backwards. Perfect. And maybe somewhere here to detect even more features. Perfect. Track forward and come back here and track backwards. Perfect. Now we have plenty of uh, tracking markers. Some of them are perfectly fine. Some of them are really bad. We will uh, delete bad ones. And now you can see here, there are a lot of spikes. These spikes means that the tracking has a high error. So these markers are not good. You can either click on these spikes and just delete them manually. Or you can let Blender do it for you. I will show you both ways. So this is how you do it manually, but automatically is just by going from the track to the solve tab, because now we need to solve the camera. First, in the solve tab, I like to set keyframe keyframes. So basically, uh, these keyframes A and B is the keyframes between those keyframes blending are detecting the parallax motion and everything. And if you set the keyframes like that, check the keyframes option here, Blender will do it for you automatically. For this case, let's do it manually. Let's press keyframe one. So from this to keyframe, I don't know, 200, let's detect the motion between these two, I think it's okay. And also I want to refine the focal length, optical center and radial distortion. So Blender will do everything for you automatically. Let's click the sole camera motion and depends of the complexity of the scene of the amount of tracking markers, speed of your computer, it will be more or less time to do it. But uh, the solve is done. The solve error is 2.38 pixels. This is pretty high solve error. The idea is to lower this error below one pixel, ideally below zero. Uh, 0.5 below half pixel. So how to do it? Well, we need to go to clean up here. And with a cleanup, let's go here to filter tracks. I like to set this first at 10 and delete these. You can see I identified 24 problematic tracks, press X and just delete it. Solve the camera again. It will wait for a few seconds. Perfect. 0 0.47. This is amazing. We can do it even better, I think. We can change maybe here to, I don't know, 150. Let's see. So motion. Okay, 0 0.47. And now let's let's go to clean tracks. And we can uh, move the reprojection error to something around maybe one. And let's clean all of this and see. So motion, 0 0.26. And you can play with these settings, maybe seven. Let's delete that and solve camera motion. See if you can lower it more and more. The idea is to make it as close to zero as you can. But of course, 0 0.25 pixels, the quarter of the pixel is more than enough and we will be there. And also, I didn't show you, but uh, at the beginning, let's undo a few times. Let me show you that this is something that you want to see. So this is, I think this is our beginning. Let's solve it again. We have 2.38. And if I deselect all the pixels, click somewhere uh, out of the these tracking markers, not pixels. If I click on this icon right there, I will see this blue line. And the goal is to make this blue line as straight as it can. Now you can see there are a lot of these spikes. We don't want that. Okay, so let's do what I did before. So 
Okay, 0 0.25 is perfectly okay for this. And uh, the next step is to go all the way down, set the background, set up tracking scene, and you will see here we have things uh, that uh, looks crazy. We have the plane, we have the cube, and the orientation is got not good. So we now need to set what is the floor, what is the origin, x and y axis, and the scale. So how to do it? First, let's set the floor. For the floor, we need at least, at least in some software, at least in this software, three points, so three markers. I will go with this, this, and this, for example, and let's press floor, and you will see oh, something crazy happen. Don't worry. Now let's uh, find the origin point. I want to use this as an origin. Okay, set origin. Perfect. And now we need to set the X. So this compared to the origin point will be X. So this will be X axis. And also let's set the scale. So for the scale, I don't know uh, how long is between these two markers. For the scale, we need to select two markers. And let's approximate that this distance is, I don't know, around maybe two meters. So say two and set scale. And this is how it looks. If I grab the cube and move it one unit up and uh, see, maybe this is like two meters high. If we scale it, like imagine that this is person two meter high something like that or maybe maybe we need to set this distance a little bit uh, better but the idea is when you're uh, having your own footage and when you're uh, making your own vfx and camera trackings you always want to have something on the scene to know the real uh, measurements so you can have the proper values here in the scene so some reference that you know the distance between things in the scene and then just put it right here in blender and you will have the proper values Okay, now that we are finished with that, let's go to the layout here. Press zero to go to the camera view. And also I will check the camera here and go to the camera options and go to the background images and move this opacity all the way up. So I want to see everything here. Also, I want to delete the foreground, the background collection. So I want all of this and I don't need this light. And also here, I want to go to foreground and background. I want to delete the background, set the background, press X and delete the background and leave only the foreground. Uh, Blender automatically set our tracking scene like that because it will uh, render the foreground separately, then the background separately, and you will have something like that. I don't like that. I like to have my own control, but this is how it looks. And now let's load our Volvo car 3D model in the scene. You can either open this scene and uh, copy Volvo and paste it here or just append it here, file and append to the scene however you want. I don't need this cube anymore. So let's paste our Volvo here. And now I want to press M, new collection, name it Volvo. Okay, like that. And here we have a hard car. So I can press R and Z and rotate it on Z axis, something like that. And if I hide the ground for a moment, we will see how this looks. I can move the car G and Shift Z somewhere here, for example. Okay, and let's see. The track is amazing. We can zoom here to see how the wheel is fitting to the scene. Really nice. It's sticking really nice. If you press one to go to the uh, front view, you can see the car is levitating a little bit about uh, the X axis. So let's right click, select objects and G and Z and move it down like that. Zero. And now it's a little bit better, but this is perfectly fine. I really like it now. This is the end of the tracking tutorial. We are, this is the point of 3D camera track. You can now add more elements here to the scene and it will perfectly stick with that like it's belonging there. But let's go a little bit forward. Let me show you how to add the lights and everything. So this looks really nice. So if I go here to the uh, rendering viewport, so basically rendering preview to see how this looks. This looks really cool, but we don't see anything except the car and car is in the dark. So in order to see the car, you need to go to the render tab, not the car, but the background. You need to go to the render tab and go to the film and set the transparency here. 
Perfect. And also, if you want to see through the car window, you need to go transparent glass. Perfect. Now we need to match our light. So for that, you can go to polyheaven.com, go to HDRIs and find any of the HDRI that you like. Uh, so we need outdoor, we need overcast. So let's see, overcast and find something that you think it suits best for that. I like this one, Urban Courtyard, and you can download this one. The point is that it has some building around and it's overcast. And let's load this in the Blender. I have already downloaded that. So in order to load it, go to here to the world, color, environment texture, and now just open your EXR file that you downloaded. So it's this one. Let's press open. And this is how it looks. If I go here, you can see also the reflection from the buildings, etc. You can also rotate it. But here, if you load the ground, you will see the shadows and everything. Okay. Now what I like to do, let's, let's uh, go right here in the corner where the plus icon appear, the cross, just move it a little bit up. And I want to switch to shader editor objects world. And let's zoom this in, click on the image node, control T to load these two additional nodes. But for that, you need to go to edit preferences, add ons, and you need to have node wrangler, node wrangler enabled. It's there in Blender, but it's not enabled by default. In case you don't have it enabled, just enable it, click save preferences, and you're ready to go. Now with these uh, nodes, you can go to rotation and Z and you can rotate this. And now if I go to this scene right there, Let's see, I want to move this building somewhere here for fun. Why not? This looks cool. This looks cool. And also the ground, make sure that the ground is big enough. So something like that. Perfect. And there we have it. We can also change the color of the car. So click on the car right there and go to the materials and car paint. I want a little bit more metallic. So maybe, maybe, maybe a little bit more bluish, something like that maybe brighter, darker, whatever you want, play with that. And uh, here we have it, we can render this out. So in order to render this out, without the background and everything, we need to do a few tweakings. Let me show you how this looks currently. So I want this preview to be 128 and also the render 128. And the noise, I want to use the GPU. And also what I like to use here, I like to go to performance just to use persistent data, and it will render a little bit faster for me. So now if I render this frame, press F12 and render this, you will see in a moment, it will render the car and the background, but I don't want the background to be loaded. I just want the car. So how to do it? Well, we need to go to compositing tab and there is a lot of, there are a lot of nodes here. So we don't need any of this. We don't need this. I will delete it. I don't need this. I just need the car. So let's go with this. This is oops, image, go to the image of compositor. And also if you want to see the, what is going on, we have only the car. And also you can see here the, yeah, this is perfectly okay. This is the end of our frame. This is the end of our frame. So this is why it looks like that. Let's go back to layout. And one thing that we forgot to do is to go to the plane here, go to the materials, add a new material to the plane. And I want to sample the color from the ground right there. So I want that. And also if you press, if you go with the roughness all the way back, you will see some reflections. We don't want that. We want roughness all the way up because this is, this is not a reflective material. And this is perfectly fine. Now you need to go here and uh, choose a folder where you want to put your render image sequence and just render it out. So I will find my folder. Okay. I set my sequence here, PNG with alpha, 8 bits, it's perfectly okay uh, for these purposes. For more advanced VFX and compositing, you will separate the shadow from the car and so on and so forth. But for this basic, it's more than enough. I will go to render, render animation and come back shortly. Now that the rendering is done, let's go to video editing software of your choice. For me, it's DaVinci Resolve. Select all the image sequence, put it just above and this is the final result. You can see how beautiful the track is. I really love this. Looks really, really cool and realistic. And now if you want to see how I use the same principles, same motion tracking techniques and a little bit of fire effect to fool everyone that my oven is on fire, check out this video. See you there. Bye bye.